What's the word, y'all? Last night, we got an NBA Finals preview. Maybe. I don't know. Boston Celtics versus Denver Nuggets. I had this game circled on my calendar since the last time they played against each other because that was a banger. Last night in general, actually, every single one of those games was a banger in their own right. Anthony Edwards dropped 44 and had a Superman block to win the game. The Pistons are no longer the worst team in basketball, according to record. Sorry, Wizards fans. The Dallas Mavericks get a much-needed win against a thriving Miami Heat. The Suns versus Raptors game wasn't as amazing as some of the other ones. But some cool stuff was going on. Is that yours truly? On a set with Nike in the NBA doing a simulcast where we interviewing The Matrix talking about Devin Booker, even though he obviously didn't play last night. And we got to do our own simulcast of this one. So it might not have been, it might have been the worst on-court game, but damn, was it a fun experience. Shout out to my friends over at Nike in the NBA for setting this up. Then we get a game that was maybe too close for comfort for, for Kings fans, but DeMontis Sabonis just showcases why he should be on an All-NBA team this season. The Bulls are 3-0 on their West Coast road trip. Get well soon, Steph Curry. I hope it's nothing major. And then we get to this one. And this, again, may be an NBA Finals preview. So because I was doing the thing with Nike in the NBA, I missed the first three quarters of this game. I got in back to my hotel room back in, in, in uh, New York. And I, of course, got back home immediately because I wanted to make videos and stuff. But I got back to my hotel, watched the fourth quarter. And on my flight home, I watched the first three quarters. And man, 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 this is the reason why the Denver Nuggets feel like head and shoulders above most of the competition. Now, I don't shy away from it. The moment that Drew Holiday ended up on the Boston Celtics, I said on my podcast, both of them, that Drew Holiday is the missing piece and the Boston Celtics is my favorite to win the championship. Uh, by the way, those podcasts, is Numbers on the Board, uh, used to be known as Through the Wire. So if you missed out that we switched names and companies and stuff, Numbers on the Board, link is in the description. And then you got the Kenny Beaton Podcast. I mean, if you like this video, then you're going to like the Kenny Beaton Podcast. It's basically a 50 minute to hour long episode of what we do here. Anyway, enough of the, enough of the plug-in. When Drew Holiday ended up on the Boston Celtics on those podcasts, I said that they are my favorite to win the NBA championship. And I'm not going to let a two-game sample size sway me away from that. Like, their loss against the Cavs was, was dreadful. 20 points blown late in the in the game is ridiculous and then of course you lose to the Denver Nuggets um the, the Nuggets are ridiculous and they're still my favorite out west but who knows who knows a game like this showcases why Nikola Jokic is the best player in basketball like you might disagree and that's fine but I don't know if there's an argument you can give me to convince me that Jokic is not the best player in basketball because when the lights are the brightest when we get down to the clutch this team Nikola Jokic is going to do the right thing. And that is one of the major differences between the Boston Celtics and the Denver Nuggets. Like, if they do eventually meet in the NBA Finals, I would probably pick the Denver Nuggets to win that series, right? The main difference is the shots that are created and taken in the clutch. And we saw that a couple nights ago when they played against the Cavaliers and they, they went 0 for 9 from, from jump shooting in that fourth quarter. And then we see it again in this one, that the shots generated in the clutch for the Celtics can be rough. And on the other side of the thing of things, because Nikola Jokic is the best player in basketball, they do it so easily. We said the same thing a few days ago when they played against the um the LA Lakers. The both games that they played against the Lakers recently, the Lakers have stayed in the game for 44 minutes. And then the last four minutes come around and boom, you look at it, it's like it's a 10-point game just like that. They have a way of generating the best possible looks and a lot of that is the big fella in the middle. Because if he needs to get his shot, his signature shots, the shots that he are gonna, he's going to create in, in the clutch are typically going to be seven feet or closer to the basket. And that is where he dominates. And if it's not him creating that shot for himself... It's him getting as close to the basket as you can and watching Aaron Gordon skedaddle down the baseline for alley oop lob. And boy, was Aaron Gordon phenomenal on that in this game. They just have a way of making things work. And you, you may have seen the report that they're saying they're not even going to the White House. You know how the NBA team win an NBA championship and they go to the White House to do some type of celebration um, with whatever sitting president is at the time. They were supposed to do that in a few weeks. I was invited. I was invited to go to the White House, y'all to be there for the Denver Nuggets. And they said, we don't actually give a damn about that because we want to go for the one seed. And if the if the Denver Nuggets get the one seed, it's going to be impo almost impossible to beat them four games out of seven. Because when they're at home, this team has the advantage of the altitude. They have the one of the best crowds in basketball. And they're just not a team that loses at home regularly. Now, 
getting the one seed, it's it's very close for them, but it's going to be hard because the teams above them are still winning now. I know Carl Anthony Towns is out with a meniscus. Get well soon. I, f I feel so bad for him. He's gone through the most over the last four years or so, so get well soon. Let's hope that he gets back in time, but uh, you saw Anthony Edwards, what he could do. Okay, seed on like they're slowing down, so getting to that one seed might be a struggle, but we still got 20 games left of the season. And one of the major things for the Denver Nuggets, a lot of people looked at um, when, when they were thinking about how they would perform this upcoming season was the fact that they lost Bruce Brown, they lost Jeff Green, they lost a few different players that were very important pieces to them winning the championship last season. Last night, we saw Watt play a phenomenal game. And I'm not expecting Watt to do that a bunch in a seven-game series, but if you have a game, two games out of a series where he can provide exactly what he did today, again, this team is going to be hard to, to really stop. And boy, do they have the tools to make it tough for your starters. Um, Jalen Brown had 41 in this one. He was cooking Aaron Gordon, but they made it so tough on Jason Tatum, whether it be P. Watt, whether it be KCP, even Michael Porter Jr. on the switch because Michael Porter Jr. is near, nearly a seven footer. And though he does not move as good as some of the other people in their lineup, he's still a big ass body that you can throw at opposing team's best player occasionally. And they really put Jason Tatum in a torture chamber. Now, Jalen Brown held his own hell. He just missed a bunch of free throws down the stretch or I guess throughout this entire game. But they have a way of defending and they have a way of making things so easy for themselves. And if they get that home court advantage again, it might be wraps. And that Western Conference is deep. Like, no, you're not getting one easy series for any team out there. But if they have that home court advantage, it's, it's going to be tough. Now, I want to flip it and talk about the Boston Celtics. I, I, I talk about how and what the shots generated were for the Denver Nuggets had they made it so easy. It's at the basket. It's an alley-oop. It's a wide-open KCP three-point shot. When we get down the stretch for the Boston Celtics, and I know the numbers say that the Celtics are one of the better clutch teams of basketball. I think they were fifth after last night, which is still amazing considering there's 30 teams of basketball. These last couple nights, these last couple games kind of showcase how difficult it can be when the shots are not falling. And and one thing that I had seen, um, and the numbers have proven this over the last five games, is that as, as of recently, they have been getting to the basket at an amazing rate and that's different from the Boston Celtics for the majority of this year they ranked from 25th to 30th in rim attempts and he's like ah oh, can a team win a championship if they don't get to the basket can a re team win a championship if they don't draw a lot of fouls but in their last couple games this is their frequency of getting to the basket as you can see I mean there's times in this season where they were in the blue which means that I mean Five for 19 of your shot attempts in this game were at the rim. And now it is the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they got the DPOY Rudy Gobert there. And Rudy Gobert is one of the best deterrents in basketball. But like, this is a ridiculously nasty stretch. But they won majority of these games because they were hitting their threes and everything. Now, recently in their last five, now this Dallas game, they still won, even though they didn't get to the basket. But this game against New York, huge almost half of their shots were at the rim this one against philly half their shots at the rim and we're seeing it go higher and higher and, and stay around this point if they can stay around this i feel good about them come playoff time right we can't get a bunch of 17 percenters you know what i'm saying but in the clutch in the clutch i can't really show you the footage um but in the clutch it's a jump shot from from uh porzingis i was in the paint i don't mind that one uh, a rebound and goal for Jalen Brown again. He was phenomenal this season. This is when Jokic got teed up and then Tatum hits the uh, hits a technical free throw. Jalen Brown gets his and one. This is a play where Drew Holiday put his shoulder into Jokic and bodied him and got a bucket. Drew Holiday had a couple shots in this one that were that were amazing. Um, this one was self created. Then we get to a pull up for Porzingis. You'll take that. And then we get three point shot, three point shot. And again, Drew Holiday hit this one right. And I think this is when he was on the baseline and had Jokic looking kind of foolish three-point shot oh no this is the one that was uh, on the baseline but like as you can see the shots generated are just significantly different than what the other teams doing now, again drew holiday made these shots but like compared to what the the denver nuggets are doing there's a dunk there's a layup that they missed there's a three-point shot that was an open look a a easy shot for a yoke the alley-oop with 20 seconds to go and then they result to three-point shot three-point shot three-point shot three-point shot and their last four shots are three-pointers when the three-point shot was not falling, you know? So we've seen them be better at this, but in the clutch of these last two games, they do revolt back to, oh my God, we got to get a three-point shot up. We got to get a three-point shot up. And that's not always the way you want them to play the game, especially if the game doesn't need a three-point shot in the moment. So I don't know if I would say that I'm necessarily concerned about these type of things, but with 20 games left, you would want them to get more reps in these clutch scenarios and get to the point where the offense is, is more fluid. This is not a specific Boston Celtics thing for sure, but a lot of the times when you look at these teams, the shots that they create in the clutch are like, give it to our best player in ISO. And typically the best player can make something happen because that's why they're the players that we pay $50 million to annually 
but the easy shots, the stuff that got you into the game, the stuff I like to see teams continue to run. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think about this game. Is this the NBA Finals preview? Is there somebody else that could be doing it? I don't really know.